Time for another pre-code film, which means it's time for another one of the bad girls from that era. This time it's Mae West, and she's brought along a new boy toy, a very young Cary Grant. <laughs> Welcome to Exploitation Reviews, and me, Rob, and today I'm taking a look at She Done Him Wrong from 1933. This was a movie based on a Broadway play called Diamond Lil, which was written by Mae West. That's pretty cool. Diamond Lil was West's first Broadway hit, and a few years later, when she adapted the character for this film for Paramount Pictures, it was also a big hit. It was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Picture, and it made so much money, it saved Paramount Studios from going bankrupt. So, uh, let that be a lesson to you. If your business is in danger of going out of business, a hot woman can save it. So, let's check it out. The film opens in the 90s. Not the grunge 90s of my youth, but a hundred years before that, in the gay 90s of Joe Biden's youth. I wonder if these bar scenes made the movie going public jealous. Uh, Prohibition was still going in 1933, after all. Uh, at least until December. Anyway, uh, the patrons chat about various things, and their conversations all come back to some beautiful woman, Lou. Uh, a guy from the rescue mission comes in, uh, Captain Cummings, uh, that's Cary Grant, by the way. And the bar owner isn't too pleased. Uh, religious folks aren't exactly great for business. But then again, what are they great for? We find out throughout the film that the owner, Gus, is something of a crime boss. He runs, together with Rita and her lover, Sergei, a counterfeit ring and is involved in prostitution. All of this crime is to support Lady Lou's rather expensive taste. Uh, she has a thing for diamonds. Okay, and then, ten minutes in the film, we finally get a look at this Lady Lou. Oh, take a look at this, Gus, and learn something. <laughs> I am delighted. I have heard so much about you. Yeah, but you can't prove it. <laughs> and she's got quite a sharp tongue. There's a little bit of drama in the bar when a young woman, uh, Sally, uh, she tries to off herself, uh, but they manage to stop her. Lou looks after her and then passes her on to Gus, who says he will look after her, but we all know what kind of business he is in. Oh, uh, but I should mention that Lady Lou doesn't know anything about Gus's illegal activities. I wouldn't exactly say she's innocent in all of this, but she's pretty much innocent in all of this. This isn't the first time people have done illegal things for her. She has an ex in prison for stealing diamonds for her, for example. In fact, he doesn't think that he is an ex. Uh, and uh, Lou, uh, she goes up to the prison to visit him and uh, to kind of, uh, you know, reassure him that she is being faithful while he's in the clink. So, yeah, he thinks Lou is waiting for him, and Lou thinks, uh, well... Supposing he found out she ain't exactly been waiting. Well, I gotta do something while I'm waiting, don't I? In fact, uh, Lou is starting to have a thing for this rescue mission leader. In fact, when she finds out that he's having trouble paying the rent, uh, she buys the house so he doesn't have to pay rent anymore. Uh, this other character, Flynn, he keeps hinting that Gus is up to no good, but he assures Lou that uh, he'll be around after Gus is carted off to prison. Uh, so, some more drama happens when Lou's ex uh, escapes from prison and uh, he's not convinced that she has been faithful. There is quite a bit more to this rescue mission director than we are at first led to believe. And the goings-on of Gus and Rita and her lover Sergei will all come to a head, but that's enough out of me as far as plot goes. Let's talk some highlights. Well, Mae West is really wonderful. Aside from her fantastic outfits, it's hard not to love her swagger and allure and, uh, more than all of that, her wit. Nearly everything that comes out of her mouth is entertaining. Full of double meaning and innuendo. Forget about this guy. See that you get a good one the next time. Who'd want me after what I've done? Listen, when women go wrong, men go right after them. And the characters, they, they just roll with it. There's no pausing or, you know, winking at the camera to let the audience know that this is a joke. It's just conversation. <laughs> Hilarious conversation. That's a pretty cool way to do a comedy, actually. And so, I suppose, the dialogue is another highlight. Kudos to Mae West for writing this character. And the story is, well, actually pretty interesting. It goes to some dark and violent places that I wasn't exactly expecting when I went into it, because I expected it to be a lighthearted comedy. But I wouldn't say the movie is perfect. Like a suitor thinking about a future with Lady Lou, this film has some shortcomings. Well, there are some musical numbers in this that I really could have done without. 
Uh, Mae West pieces are fine, especially the final one, but there's these other pieces from this guy, and yeah, they did nothing for me. Uh, modern audiences might think that the interactions between Mae West's character and her maid character uh, don't exactly age well, and uh, for the most part they would be right. Uh, but remember, uh, this was the 1930s, uh, and keep in mind Mae West insisted on hiring black actors for her films and Broadway productions. She was one of the people who worked towards breaking down the racial discrimination barriers in Hollywood. She was pretty cool like that. Actually, uh, she was even cooler than that. Uh, at one point, she was dating a, a black boxer, and the owners of the apartment building that she lived in uh, objected to him visiting. Uh, you know, they had some you know, racist policy about black people coming into their place. Uh, so Mae West, uh, she bought the apartment building and removed that policy. Pretty damn cool. Anyway, uh, back to the movie. I wish it had been a bit more explicit. I don't mean in terms of language or uh, sexiness, but in terms of story. There's a lot of subtlety here that makes more sense on a second viewing. I know it was the 30s and they couldn't come right out and say the, what exactly was going on with all this nefarious stuff with Gus and whatever, uh, but I think they could have done a slightly better job of making it clear earlier uh, what Gus was up to and that Lou didn't know anything about it. Oh, and the ending of this movie makes no sense and is really stupid. That certainly could have been set up a lot better. Yeah, I mean, overall, this is uh, not a great movie, uh, but it is a pretty good movie, and it's only slightly over an hour long, so it's well worth your time. 